Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a look at the interior of the planet Mercury. We don't know very much about the interior because we've never landed on the surface and we've only sent two spacecraft to examine the planet. The first one was in the 1970s, Mariner 10, which only flew by the planet twice before it stopped functioning. And of course, we still have the spacecraft Messenger, which managed to go into orbit around Mercury for a while, from which we got quite a few measurements. But nevertheless, we didn't land on the planet, so we don't have a good feel for the interior of the planet. We do know the size of the planet. We know the density from flying around the planet. We can very accurately measure the density, the, the mass of the planet, therefore calculate the density. But we don't know what proportion of the planet is metal and what proportion of the planet is mantle and rock. But we have a fairly good idea because we assume that it's fairly similar to the other terrestrial planets. And from knowing the properties of various metals and the properties of various silicates and, and different types of rock, and understanding the compressed densities under the enormous load, the enormous weight in the interior of the planet, we can guess pretty well what we think is going on inside the planet. So basically, the planet has three regions. In the interior, we have a fairly large core which contains primarily metal and primarily iron. It's called the metal core and because of what we found in the two ways, we were able to measure the rotational speed of the planet very accurately and we noticed some wobbling, some aberrations in that rotational speed and therefore we assume there's some sloshing around going on inside and therefore we assume that partially the metal core must be partially liquid, or partially molten. Also, the planet has a weak magnetic field, which would also indicate that there's a high probability of some movement inside the planet. And so therefore also we have evidence to believe that, yes, part of the core is probably molten. It turns out that the diameter, or the radius I should say, from the interior of the planet, the center of the planet, to where the core ends is about 1800 kilometers, which makes it about 75% of the radius of the total planet. When we calculate the volume of that, we then realize that the Mercury core occupies about 42% of the total volume of the planet. The remainder is, is taken up by the mantle around the core, which is primarily made out of silicate, silica dioxide and various minerals. At the very edge of the planet, around the mantle, we have a what we call a crust that's primarily made of solidified rock and we assume that the crust is about 35 kilometers thick. Again, there's a lot of guesswork in there. I got a lot of insinuation, so we're not exactly sure, but those are fairly good numbers. And if you look at various sources, you'll see some different numbers, but they all will range somewhere in that various, uh, no, that various range. So if we then assume that the thickness of the mantle is about 500 to 600 kilometers, you add it all up, the total radius of the planet is very close to 2,440 kilometers. So we can say that the radius of Mercury is about 2,440 kilometers, which means that the metal core takes up about three quarters of that radius. Now, the density of the planet is 5,427 kilograms per cubic meter, compared to the Earth, it's almost as much as the Earth, 5,515 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, we suspect from doing several calculations that the percentage of the interior that's metal in Mercury is far greater than the percentage of metal in the Earth. We assume that it's close to about 70% metal and about 30% rock in mass, compared to the Earth, which is more like 50-50. How do we know that? Well, if we go back to understanding what the interior of the Earth looks like, we realize that the densities of the Earth for the crust is about 2.7 to 3 grams per, per cubic centimeter, which is 2,700 to 3,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The oceanic crust is a little bit more dense. The mantle varies from 3.3 near the upper part of the mantle to down to about 5.7 grams per cubic centimeter at the lower end of the mantle and then the outer core has a density of 9.9 .9 to 12.2 and the inner core 12.6 to 
Now these are compressed densities and based upon where they're located and with the earth we have a fairly good idea because we've studied that using the study of earthquake waves. We know where the various boundaries are so we have a very good idea of what the inter internal structure of the earth is. We're able to calculate these densities and when we add them all up they match very closely to the overall density of the earth. So we try to do a similar kind of thing. But we also try to calculate what we call the uncompressed density. If the enormous waves of the planet wasn't bearing down on the, on the interior of the planet, what would be the uncompressed density of the Earth and the uncompressed density of Mercury if there was no additional compression due to the weight of all that material? Well, for Mercury, it would be 5,300 kilograms per cubic meter, and on the Earth, it would be about 4,400 kilograms per cubic meter. This would then indicate that Mercury has a much higher percentage of metal than the Earth because it has a much greater average uncompressed density. Notice the metal in the Earth, the core, takes up a volume of about 17%, and for Mercury, it's about 42%. Again, a much greater proportion of the volume of the planet Mercury is metal versus that of the Earth. Now, how do we calculate the density, and how do we calculate the various proportions of metal versus mantle? Well, the way we do that is as follows. We take the density of the Earth, and we derive that from taking the average density of the core times the percent of the volume of the core plus the average density of the mantle times the percentage volume of the, end of the mantle. And based upon the depth that those boundaries are, we can pretty well come up with a typical average density of the core and a typical average density of the mantle. Mantle. We multiply that times the percent volume of the total volume of the planet. We add those numbers together and you can see that you get something that's very close to the expected value. So in the, in the case of the Earth, just by throwing some numbers together, I end up with 5.526, which is very close to the actual density of the Earth. So by manipulating these values a little bit and by understanding how much they're compressed, from the Earth we can get a very good reading of what that must be like. Now we use the same principle for mercury. So we assume that there's a certain percentage metal and a certain percentage mantle, and then based upon the properties that we think they have, because we don't know exactly what kind of metal we have in the interior of mercury, and we don't know exactly what kind of silicates are in the mantle, but by taking a kind of a good guess, and by then assuming based upon the compressions and the presumed compressed densities of these materials, multiplying that times the presumed quantity that we think we have, we can come up with a value that must then match the value that we actually know the density of mercury is. And again, by throwing some numbers together, you can see that by taking some good educational guesses and by understanding the compression, compressional densities and the presumed densities of the materials when they're compressed and uncompressed, we can actually come up with a fairly good guess as to how big the core is and how big the mantle is and what it contains. So this is how we do that by using some good estimates, by changing the numbers until what we get end up here is very close to what the actual densities are. And then we say, well, I think it must be like this. And so therefore, that's how we came up with the best guess to the interior of mercury, what percentage is metal, what percentage is the mantle with the silicates, and what the presumed densities are of those materials based upon the presumed content of those regions in the interior of the planet. And, as you can see, a little bit of guessing, a little bit of calculation, and we're probably fairly close. And that's how it's done.